getting a little paranoid here, but <laughs> considering what I just witnessed, I don't really consider it paranoid. So how do you like that? You're riding along, minding your own business? <laughs> now, do you think that was just luck, or is it something we can study and apply to the next ride? I honestly believe that anybody could have made the same choices that helped me avoid the crash. And in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts right after the crash. Power on. And then I'll talk you through it moment by moment. Recording. There we go. Back on. Just on time. I'm all hot and sweaty now. Here I was thinking, oh, it'd be a nice relaxing ride. <laughs> I'll go through the canyon. <laughs> oh, man. So as much as I'd like to say that was probably all skill, <laughs> there probably was a lot of dumb luck. Luck did play a significant role, no doubt. The car could have come at me at a different angle, maybe sideways, and the tire could have completely come off the rim. In the previous video, when I'm walking through the accident, you can see the tire and the wheel are on opposite sides of the road, so it did come off. It just didn't come off in front of me. So things like that were luck, how things came at me, I just got lucky. But my position on the road and the instinctive choices I made at the last seconds, those aren't luck, that was habit. I saw him getting over and I could see him crossing the line, and I said, you know, they, they may impact. But I didn't think it was going to be that dramatic, I'll tell you that right now. I thought it was going to be, he'd bump into her. So I started to figure out, if she, if he hits her, here's what I was thinking as, as that was happening. If he hits her, where's her car going to go? That's what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Where's her car going to go? And I never dreamed that someone's tire was going to get, or wheel was going to get torn off of the car. Because it had time, I wasn't that close. I do remember thinking, where's her car going to go once he hits her? Because I guess in the end I decided it's going to happen. There's nothing that either one of them are going to do about it, and there's nothing I can do about it. So this is about to happen in the next half a second. And where's her car going to go, is what I thought. Where's it going to bounce to? Is it going to bounce clear into my lane? Is she going to kind of stay over there? So I start to back off as I realize it's happening. And then I start to maneuver away where I think it'll be a safer, you know, place if her car bounces away. But then his tire tears off, or his wheel gets ripped off, and somehow I believe I went in between them both. So yeah, I was thinking it's going to happen, and where can I go? That's safe. And that was a proactive, you know, decision. Yay for me, I, th I think I deserve a cookie. Might just have to get a cookie out of this one. Basically, what helped me maybe was that I was, as soon as I saw that happening, I started thinking about an escape plan. Even when the wheel broke off and the car was in one place and the wheel was flying somewhere else, the wheel kept on going towards me. But because I didn't really look at the wheel, I just noticed, okay, that's the wheel coming off, but where can I go where there is no wheel and there is no car? <laughs> And there is no big pieces that I need to worry about. Once I, uh, uh, when, since I was focused on that, that's basically where I did go. That's essentially what happened. I, I was thinking about that, and that's exactly where the bike ended up going, where there was nothing else to deal with. But the video will record, you know, that's objective. It's, this is all my emotional response later. We'll watch the video and see what happened. So minding the gap, what does that mean? Well, obviously it's a play on words, but here I'm trying to say, keep a space around you, a bubble around you, a gap around you, so that you have 
a place that you can observe traffic from, come to some conclusions about what is happening, what might happen, what someone might want to do, and then you have time to do something about it. I never want to be right on someone's bumper. I don't want to be riding right next to somebody. So this is my normal lane positioning. You can see I'm winding a gap. I have a space around me. I'm stable here though. I'm not going slower. I'm not going faster. I'm not going to split the lanes. There's no reason to. I know there's a light up ahead and I don't see the reason to race up on a potentially red light with a bunch of parked cars there. Now one thing worth noticing is that the crash car is almost completely hidden behind the white SUV until only moments before the crash. The curve and the white SUV block it from view. Now I wasn't sure if they were going to crash at first, but then I realized it's going to happen, yes, and I, what am I going to do about it? Initially I was thinking, where's that gray car going to go in front of me once they get hit? And I was also thinking about moving to the right, but I thought that car might bounce to the right. And the white cars are actually kind of crowding the lane and if I move behind that white car, it would feel like it's too close, especially being too close to something that might potentially turn into a wall as they break or hit the gray car. But obviously that didn't happen. Instead, the wheel broke off of this oncoming car. Now here at the bottom of the frame on the left, you can see my hand. I'm beginning to aim the bike towards the right lane. But as I said earlier, I have my doubts about the gray car. I'm not sure about the white car. It's too close. I don't want to be right behind it. Um, and I'll end up steering back as I decide to go for the gap between the, the black car and the wheel. I remember thinking as the wheel was coming towards me, I didn't want it to hit me, <laughs> which seems obvious, but I, that's what I was thinking. And I realized now with the white car blocking sort of my right side, I saw something sticking out of the wheel, which is the linkage and all the other crap there and they, both the car and the wheel are coming at me so fast that I really felt like there wasn't enough room and time to cross in front of either the car to the left or the wheel to the right but as it got closer the gap between got bigger and that's where I ended up aiming targeting and eventually passing through that doorway I don't think I actually went straight down the middle of the gap I sort of favored the tire side I believe and steered away from the car a bit, which probably saved my side-mounted GoPro, the one I usually have mounted to the left passenger peg. Here you can see the bike stable, everything's fine. The center line is into the corner of the lower left of the frame, and my hand is relaxed. Now as I see the other car, I start to tense up. I go to yellow alert, then red alert, as I see what's happening, and I start to make a choice. Now I'm moving to the right, and then I change my mind and go in between the gap between the wheel and the car. Now I hope this isn't going too long, but I'd like to make uh, this into something that is actually useful to people out on the road. And I want to review some of the things, the, the three major things I feel made a big difference for me in this situation. The first one is basically stay away from traffic. Again, uh, mind the gap. The main reason to give yourself space is because you want time. So if you don't have space, if it's not available, it's just too crowded, then ride slower. Then you'll have more time to deal with stuff. The second major thing is, back to the gaps again, is to target open spaces. Uh, that's what I normally do. It's what I just, in the habit of, even when I come up on stops, I generally just aim for the gap between the cars or some open space. I don't, never park right behind another car or target license plates. And the final thing is really street strategies. You have to kind of look ahead and think ahead as far as what you think is about to happen and where should you put yourself to be safe. It's like a chess game. You want to stay as many steps ahead as you can. Now if you don't have the patience to plan ahead, everything's reactions, well you may not win too many games. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whew. Did you see how I <laughs> fuck you? Oh I forgot I'm going to the yeah, okay, okay. Still a little bit discombobulated.
here I was thinking, should I put the camera on? I don't know. Maybe I should. You, you, you have any fucking idea how pissed I would have been if I didn't have the camera on? <laughs> if I said, ah, fuck it, it's too much extra work. I'm sure you, you, whoever's watching this, all my motor vlogger, fellow motor vloggers, I know you know how pissed I would have been. my own shadow. I was like, who's that? <laughs> right next to me. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs>